Hello community. We have a new technical report published for the Q3 model and especially I'm interested in how they managed to create here the dynamic switching of syncing to non-syncing mode. And you might ask, is it important? Yeah, look here at AIM24, AIM25 performance data. The non-syncing mode you see here in red in both cases and in blue you see the improvement in the accuracy of a pass at one with the syncing mode. So yeah, it is absolutely fascinating to see how we can have both mode of syncing in one model. How they built this. So main question today, how to create here those syncing models. You know, syncing mode for complex multi-step reasoning and the non-syncing mode for rapid context-driven immediate responses by our LLM. So let's open up the video and you remember the classical training process. Now we have the pre-training, the supervised fine-tuning, reinforcement learning with GRPO or any other PPO methodology that we have. And then we have the inference. So what they did is now they looked at all the different possibilities, the different steps, the different sequences in a pre-training sequence and they evaluated it. Simple task, try and evaluate. And they found here, following now the technical report here of the Q1-3 team, that these three steps here were the best one. So at first, they pre-trained this here on general knowledge. Then the pre-training continued here with a science and a code-specific and a mathematics-specific pre-training. And then finally, they said, OK, and now we go here for a long context pre-training up to 32K token length. Having done this, they evaluated here the resulting model and they were happy with this and says, great, we have now a new pre-trained model. And now they say, okay, but now how we go on, because you remember we have this dynamic switch of syncing and non-syncing mode. How you implement this? At what step do you implement this? And this is the solution as published by q 3 so we start here with a supervised fine-tuning where we have a long chain of thought cold start. Then we will use GRPO for the reasoning reinforcement learning. Then comes the important step here. The syncing fusion is happening here between reasoning and non-reasoning. And then we have a final general reinforcement learning GRPO implementation. So we have a linear sequence in our training process from the pre-training to the post-training. Yes, going here over there. And what we end up are two basic models. We have here a mixture of expert model, the Q13, 235 billion free trainable parameter with active 22 parameter, billion parameter. And then we have a non mixture of expert, a dense Q13, 32B model. Isn't that great? And if we have those two models, you see here our mixture of expert and our dense model, then it is easy we can distill further models down. So this is a straightforward distillation task. I will show you this in a minute. But we have now for the dense category and for the mixture of extra expert category, we have now our best performance model and the rest is distillation. So we need a spark of genius to continue here. And as I showed you in the pre-training, it was curriculum learning. And this is a beautiful implementation of a three-stage curriculum learning right from the textbooks. Now, the general pre-training stage one for a general understanding and just a language understanding. And please remember, we have 119 languages that Q13 is able to understand and speak in a different variety of expertise. The data were about 30 trillion tokens here from real diverse domains, multilingual text, books, stem content code, and it was an unsupervised pre-training on the raw text, simply to learn the token prediction task in general and maybe the first basic patterns. This was followed up by stage two, the knowledge intensive pre-training. Here we focus now on reasoning and domain-specific expertise in science, mathematics and coding. They used here a lot of data here from Knowledge Rich, Corpora, Yet data generated here by a QN 2.5 mat and a QN 2.5 coder 
So they brought all the data together and had a continued pre-training now on specialized domain that are important for the reasoning process, especially in handling complex tasks. And then, for having real long augmentation chains, they increased here the, the long context pre-training in stage 3. They went to 32k token, and they had here long documents, PDF, technical manuals, books with sequences up to 32k, and they had simply technologies like you know, like yarn or dual chunk attention to optimize the attention mechanisms for these real long inputs. If you want to learn more about yarn, the methodology that our Q and three team applied, I have here a specific video where I explain here from rope of a coronal a long rope, theta scaling with ring attention and yarn, everything in detail to you if you're interested. Now, the core, of course, is here this particular sequence here, this combination of supervised fine-tuning and DRPO. Now, let's have a look at all four steps in detail. The first one is easy. Now, the long chain of thought, the cold start. We just have a pre-trained, well, now we cold started. We generate, of course, a data set for this. So, we generate chain of thought data for the reasoning task. This means the order tell us we build a comprehensive data set, spans a wide range of categories, mathematical, beautiful, and each problem in the data set is paired with a verified reference answer or a code based test case. So we have here a chain of thought, fine tuning in the cold start. What we want to achieve, they tell us, is to instill now foundational reasoning patterns in the model without being now overly emphasizing here immediate reasoning performance. And this approach, as they tell us, ensures that if we go down in the, now in the next step to the reinforcement learning phase, that the reinforcement learning is really efficient. So the equilibrium between a cold start and a reinforcement learning is not so easy as it seems. So let's jump here to the next step, to the TRPO or L, and let's have a look at the reasoning. The query verifier pairs that they use here in the reasoning reinforcement learning stage, they had four criteria, not used during the cold start, but learnable from the cold start model, as challenging, as interesting as possible, and they cover a broad range of subdomains. And they tell us here the authors close to 4,000 query verifier pairs, and then they had the data set, and then they went here with RL, and they employed GRPO. Interestingly, they give us here a performance data of this particular step. And they told us if we have the benchmark M24, and we have here our mixture of expert 235B model here, the performance increases from 70 to 85 over a total of 170 reinforcement learning training steps. You see, here's where the performance really shines. Now, the next step is the real important step that is really Interesting, if you want to learn how is this happening in the dynamic switch of non-thinking to thinking, it's happening now, it's happening here in this step. So the authors tell us we integrate now the non-thinking capabilities into all of the previous developed thinking models. So this is an easy and an interesting step, no? You don't start with the simple thing and then you increase the complexity, but now you say, well, I do hear the complex thing with the thinking capabilities and now I just say okay and now I integrate non-thinking capabilities and they do it here in a template way it's really simple beautiful let me show how this is done yeah they want to reduce the cost and the complexity of deploying separate models for the thinking and non-thinking tasks so we have one model that can do both and the others tell us we conduct continual supervised fine-tuning on the reasoning model that left in the last step and design here a chat template to fuse the two models. And here you have it from the technical report. Just look at the notation. It is so similar. Here we have the thinking mode with a thinking content and here we have the non-thinking mode with the label no thinking here and the thinking content is simply missing. That's all there is in difference. So beautiful, easy to learn, perfect for pattern recognition AI. Now, the data set that they use here, of course, have to have both the thinking and the non-thinking data for the additional supervised fine-tuning. No? 
And now this is, you know, sometimes you know all the ingredients for a recipe if you want to cook something. But here they just give us the ingredients. So this is interesting. And they say, you know, the non-thinking data is carefully curated here to cover here a diverse range of task coding, mathematics, instruction following, multilingual task, creative writing, question answering, and role playing. So yeah, this is here where really the, the magic is happening here. You have to prepare the data here for the supervised fine tuning. Now, there's an interesting detail. I would like to show you this. If you go there, you know, you have the possibility here, especially with Q and 3, a syncing budget. You can control here the cost or the maximum length here of the syncing process up to 38,912 token. They do this here by a simple stop syncing instruction. This is the command. But you know what? It's really fascinating that... If they do this, they say it's worth noting that this ability to have here this answer generated here for a particular budget of time or of length of thinking, this emerges naturally as a result of applying here the thinking mode fusion. This is nice. So we have a model that has here identical schemas for thinking and non-thinking mode. And then somehow the model figures out itself that with a particular maximum length that a user can define, it really tries to stay within this boundary condition. Really interesting. Yeah, and then we come to the main part, to the general reinforcement learning with GRPO. Now, this is now here a real intense part, and I recorded here in 4K, so you can read it on a big screen. You have here the following target enhancement that they say that we want to achieve here with this general reinforcement learning. We want to have a capability of an instruction following, of a format following with the thinking and end of thinking, with a reference alignment for open-ended question for, and this is important, agent ability. So correctly invoke tools via designated interfaces. And then they have here very special abilities for specialized scenarios. So they think it will be in the future really interesting here to integrate here in an optimal way the REC system, our retrieval augmented generation task. And they already have here a reinforcement learning implemented on the main task you do with REC, with agents. Real interesting, the next step. Now, you know, they use here rewards, a classical reward model. But interestingly, they utilize here three distant, distinct types of rewards. So they go with the classical rule-based reward. Now, this is useful for general tasks such as instruction following or the format following, the format cohere adherence. Well-designed rule-based rewards can assess here the correctness of model outputs with a high precision. And then they go here with model-based rewards with a reference answer. And they use this here the QN 2.572B instruct model to score here the model response based on the reference. And this methodology, if you want, allows here real flexible handling of the diverse task. And they also have here model-based reward without a reference answer. So without any other LLM helping out here, leveraging the human preference data, we train a reward model to assign Scala scores to the model responses. He also think this is where the magic kind of is happening. If you get those steps right in the complexity of the data, I think this is really what drives here the success of this particular model. Let's have here a look at the published fact. This is here the technical report by Q1, as you see, published today, May 14, 2025. And they give here a beautiful explanation, and it's great. They're transparent. They explain this to you. It's really beautiful. I hope that every model that is available should have such a clear explanation as how we did it, how we trained the model, what were the steps, what we wanted to achieve for each single step. And as I tell you, all Q when three models are publicly accessible under Apache 2 license. Now that we have our two main models, it was rather straightforward with a distillation process to generate now the smaller models. Eh? And they call it here a strong to weak distillation pipeline that they build and they describe. 
and this was designed here to optimize here the lightweight models and they have here five tens models from 0 0.6 billion to 14 billion and they have one additional mixture of export model to 30 be a active 3 billion parameter mixture of expert model Distillation process is what you would expect, an off-policy distillation, an online policy distillation. And here you have now the student model generates your own policy sequences for the fine-tuning. It prompts here, the prompts are sampled, and the student model produces you also responses in either the syncing or the non-syncing mode in a real-time sampling. And the student model is then fine-tuned by its alignment, by aligning its logics here with those of the teacher model to minimize here the cool-back Leibler divergence. You remember this is the divergence between probabilistic distribution shifts and how to come closer. Absolute fascinating technical paper here of the training process of Q13. And as always at the end of the video, I give it here, this is the screenshot from the conclusion by the authors themselves. I think it's amazing that we have 119 languages that this model is able to respond to in a certain way. But really absolutely fascinating is here the near future. And the researcher tells us we will focus here on several future key areas. We will continue to scale up the pre-training by using data that is both higher in quality and more diverse in its contents. And at the same time, they work and improve the model architecture and the training methodology themselves. Scaling extreme long context. In addition, we plan to increase the computational re resources here for the reinforcement learning with particular emphasis on an agent based reinforcement learning system that learn also from environmental feedback. Yes, this is our, if you want, our robotic system where we have here really some robots in the wild interacting here with their actions in the environment. They receive immediate feedback over their sensors, visual, um, LiDAR, whatever sensors you have. And you have to integrate this in a continuous learning process. Of course, agent-based reinforcement learning system, because each agent will be dedicated a specific expert agent for a particular task. Yeah, and they tell us this will allow us to build agents capable of tackling complex tasks that require inference timescaling. Absolutely fascinating topic if you want to see Q13 in action, not just read here the technical report. I have two videos. The first one is here the big model, the 235 billion free trainable parameter model, where I show you live the hot swappable syncing mode. And then I was really surprised by this good performance here of a smaller model here. And we are talking here about the 30B mixture of expert model by Q3, QN3, and I performed some logic reasoning text, and I was really impressed that these tests here were great. QN3, absolute recommend the main model, but also here the smaller model for particular tests, especially if you're interested in science, in mathematics, in more complex reasoning. I think this are one of the best models out there that you have plus the open source. If you enjoyed this video, hey, why not subscribe and I see you in my next video.